In 43 AD the Romans invaded Britain and, in about 44 AD, they built a fort on the site of Chichester. It was by a source of water, the River Lavant, and close to a harbour so supplies could be brought in by ship from France. Roman Chichester was built on a grid pattern. The main streets formed a cross, which remains today as North, South, East, and West streets. The king of the local Celtic tribe, Cogadubnus, cooperated with the Romans rather than resist them. The Romans left him as a puppet king of Sussex. After the Romans had left the fort, Cogadnubus decided to take it over and make it into a town. In the late 2nd century a ditch was dug around Roman Chichester and earth ramparts were erected with a wooden palisade on top. Early in the 3rd century stone walls were built. In the 4th century, they were strengthened with bastions, semicircular towers. What happened to Chichester after the Romans left? No one knows for sure. It may have been abandoned or it may be that some people continued to live there and the town limped on with a much smaller population. In the late 5th or early 6th century, the Saxons arrived. Chichester is named after a Saxon called Sissa. The Saxons called any group of Roman buildings a Sister. They called this town Sissa's Sister. It changed to Sissester then finally to Chichester. To ease the flow of traffic into Chichester, the west, north and south gates were demolished in 1773. And in 1783 East Gate was also demolished. Nothing is known of what happened to Chichester till the late 9th century. At that time Alfred the Great created a network of fortified places across his kingdom where men could gather when the Danes attacked. Often he used old Roman towns or forts. Chichester was made a borough. The strategy worked. In 894 the Danes landed in West Sussex but men from Chichester and the surrounding area went out to meet them. They routed the Danes, killing several hundred men and capturing several ships. At the time of the Norman Conquest, Chichester probably had a population of fewer than 1,500 people. That seems very small to us but remember that most people lived in tiny villages of about 100 to 150 people. The southeastern part of Chichester belonged to the Archbishop of Canterbury. This area was called the Palatine. The word Palatine means, of the palace, because this area belonged to the, palace, of the Archbishop. In time the name became corrupted to Palant. In the 13th century, it is recorded that wool was exported from Chichester, from Del Quay. At that time wool was by far England's most important export. The king tried to control the trade by only allowing certain ports to export wool. These ports were called staples.
In 1353 Chichester was made a staple port. It might seem surprising now but in the Middle Ages Chichester was one of England's most important ports. Chichester Harbour was deeper than it is today. The Normans built a Mott and Bailey castle in Chichester in what is now Priory Park. This was a wooden fort on an artificial hill, a Mott, surrounded by a ditch and rampart with a wooden palisade, a bailey. Later the castle may have been rebuilt in stone. In 1538 Henry VIII closed the friaries in Chichester and sold their property. A mansion was built on the site of the Black Friary in East Street. The Grey Friary was demolished but its church survived and in 1541 it was sold to the corporation and made the Guildhall. In 1642 came the civil war between the King and Parliament. At that time Chichester was a town of about 3,000 people and their loyalties were divided. The bishop and most of the clergy supported the King while most of the merchants supported Parliament. At first, it was not clear which way Chichester would go. Then the local landowners, the gentry, decided the issue. A force of 600 men, 200 cavalry, and 400 infantry rode into Chichester and took if for the king. There was no resistance. However, Parliament quickly sent an army to besiege the town. 
They fired cannons from the north, then the west and finally from the east. The parliamentary soldiers set up a cannon on a church tower and fired over the wall. The royalists surrendered. In 1075 the local bishop moved his bishopric from Selsey to Chichester, changing its history forever. Chichester Cathedral was built after 1091 and was consecrated in 1108. Unfortunately, this building was severely damaged by fire in 1114 and it was rebuilt. Another fire devastated the cathedral in 1187 and it again had to be rebuilt. Chichester Cathedral originally had a bell tower but in the early 15th century this was moved to a separate tower called a campanile. The cathedral was given a spire to replace it.
In 1501, Bishop Story erected the Chichester Market Cross. If you wanted to sell goods at the main town market you had to pay a toll. The bishop said anyone could sell things at the market and not pay a toll provided they could stand under the cross. There were some improvements to Chichester during the Georgian era. In 1726, four clocks were added to the cross. From about 1230, Franciscan friars lived in buildings in St. Martin's Square. In 1269 they moved to the site of the castle. The site in St. Martin's Square was taken over by St. Mary's Hospital. This establishment previously existed in South Street. In the 13th century, the friars arrived in England. The friars were like monks but instead of withdrawing from the world, they went out to preach and help the poor. In Chichester, there were Dominican friars. They lived in the southeast of the town where St. John's Church is today. <laughs> 